So on this channel, I've spoken about the misconceptions about exotic pets, the meaning of domestication, and why indiscriminate bans make no sense. However, I've never introduced my personal pets. This is Emerald, my newest addition. She is a bat-eared fox, which, unlike fennec foxes, is not part of the genus Vulpes with so-called true foxes, like the red, arctic, and swift fox. Bat-eared foxes are interesting because, anecdotally, they've been claimed to be the best house pets and the most dog-like of the foxes available to private owners. So why is this noteworthy? Well, bat-eared foxes are a relatively new species that has been introduced to the pet trade and presumably they've been bred for far less generations in captivity than fennec foxes and certainly red foxes whose human driven domestication dates back to the 1880s. This is also where Belyav sourced the founders for his domesticated foxes in the famous Russian farm fox experiment. Even people who deny that exotic pets are domesticated tend to agree that this experimental population is domesticated or at least partially domesticated, whatever that means. Yet, in seeming contradiction, the bat-eared fox might be superior to reds in terms of house manners, tameness, litter box training, and other traits. Bat ears don't come in a multitude of colors like reds, and there are no bat-eared foxes with so-called domesticated syndrome traits, like floppy ears or shorter snouts to my knowledge. But bat-eared foxes haven't been domesticated anywhere near as long and they are known to be shy in the wild, making it hard for tourists to view them on African safaris. So how can this be? On this channel, I've repeated the idea that domestication doesn't really exist or is a useless marker of determining what kind of pet an animal makes or whether or not it should be a pet. The fact is, unlike what has been claimed without evidence, it did not take thousands of years to domesticate dogs. In fact, dogs might not have undergone as much change as people believe. They did not descend from the extant wild wolves of which we are familiar. They are their own subspecies, possessing their own unique traits, which includes tameness, smaller size, reduced or non-existent prey drive in favor of a more scavenger lifestyle and other features that they developed before or during their co-evolution with humans without any intentional selective breeding. They are essentially wild animals that just evolved like any other species to exploit a niche. And when it comes to dogs, that niche is living around humans. But dogs are unique. Most animals are not like this and that doesn't mean they shouldn't be in human care. There are many parallels between dog behavior and exotic mammals that are kept as pets, but there are some consistent differences. Exotics tend to latch on to a single caretaker or people of which they are familiar. They have some level of skittishness that is less common, but not entirely absent from domesticated dogs. And most notably in my experience, they tend to not have the same connection with humans that dogs have. Dogs have co-evolved with humans to the extent that it is theorized that their faces and eyes have adapted to look human-like, with their sclera or whites of their eyes more visible. My pets often have a hard time understanding me as a person, including that my hands, feet, and face are not separate entities. Most of my pets are fine with approaching me, but the situation changes dramatically when you try to pick them up. Most do not tolerate it. And Emerald? We're still working on that, and I can pick her up most of the time while she's small, but there are times when she becomes aggressive if she doesn't want to be picked up. She's got a bold personality and a low tolerance for things not going her way. And keep in mind that she is still a kit. So are bat-eared foxes like dogs? Not in this respect. However, she does seem relatively easy to train and she is using her litter box for the most part. Something that I believe has made a profound difference is letting her interact with my dog. Now, like most dogs, my dog prefers humans over her fellow canids, and she's not a fan of this little fox. However, she's been paramount in helping Emerald understand her boundaries, as she gravitates towards canines and seems to respect them more. 
When my dog tells her to stop doing something, she has an entirely different reaction than when I do it. Even if I replicate the sounds my dog makes when she's annoyed, Emerald usually crouches down and rolls over when my dog growls or lunges towards her, and she really needs this discipline as she's pretty hyper. So I think having a dog or some other interactive animal can help them blend into a human household more successfully. So keep this in mind if you are considering a fox and hear from others that they have excellent temperaments. Does the fox owner claiming that have a well-mannered dog? Still, if bat ears have more in common with dogs than red foxes, this pretty much dispels the myth that generations of selective breeding makes a species better suited to be pets, or that an animal can be more domesticated. Actually, domestication, however that's defined, doesn't matter, nor does the length of time an animal has supposedly undergone domestication. In fact, why is food aggression so prevalent in dogs, despite tens of thousands of years of supposed domestication, if domestication is meant to improve upon a species each generation. Food aggression is where many exotic pets and many dogs intersect behaviorally, despite the vast difference in their evolutionary history. Throughout writing articles and making these videos, I've learned a lot about the state of our scientific community and some of the cognitive biases that undermine our understanding of animals. The failure of academics to define and understand domestication remains surprising to me and it is the foundation of the arguments used to discriminate against alternative pet owners.